What is the next big revolution in technology that's going to change our lives like the iPhone did? Well, this technology is going to change our lives and perhaps even make our phones obsolete. In 2006, I remember getting my first cell phone. It was a game changer for me. I thought it was so cool having this phone that can talk to people with. It was a flip phone. It had no touchscreen, had no camera at all. In fact, I have it right here. This was my first cell phone I ever had. And I remember having a couple games on it that I can play in the bus ride to school. Great times. But the reason why I'm taking it back to 2006 is because people's mentalities about phones were completely different than today. People saw phones back then as business devices, not entertainment devices. And it wasn't really until the iPhone came out that people saw phones differently and used them differently. So in order to understand the future where the next big thing is, you have to understand the past. In 2006, Blackberries were the biggest phones back then, the best selling phones because the people use them for businesses. You can email for the first time, all these things on a phone, and that was great and all, they did okay, but it wasn't really until the iPhone came out that people began to see phones as something more than just business devices. And it really started with Steve Jobs at Apple with the iPod. Steve Jobs had a dream to put all of our music, all of our songs, everything we want, our entire music experience on one device that can fit in our pockets. That was what the iPod was and that's why it was so successful. And Steve Jobs really carried over that innovation into the iPhone where he took the iPod, internet, and phone and combined them into one device that can fit in your pocket called the iPhone. Its versatility, its beautiful design is really what captured people's attentions because now people can develop their own apps and they can have their own independent experiences on this phone and utilize all of it. Developers were utilizing the phone in ways that even Apple couldn't see. But that's what people want. People want that power, that control to be able to do anything they want at the palm of their hands. That is what makes a device revolutionary. So going into the future, these are some of the key features that we want to see in specific devices. Now fast forward to present day, the iPhone is beginning to die. The smartphone is beginning to die. And we all see it. We see the last few years, hardware changes have been very minimal to smartphones. It's really the software that's really you know, evolving. There's only so much innovation you can squeeze into rectangles. And that's what we're seeing. The limits of the phone are beginning to be reached. The next big thing is on the way. It already is. It's just a matter of time and a matter of what exactly is it going to be. So in order for us to replace the phone, we need something worthy of moving on to. Now, throughout the years, there have been many ideas put forward from people. Things like uh, bezel-less phones, where there's no bezel to it. It's just a, a glass slate, right? Where like a screen protrudes from it. And that's cool and all, but it seems like a waste of time because it's like you're not actually gaining anything from that design it's just a cool looking thing so it wouldn't really be much value to plus it'd be very difficult to do but there are a few valid concepts out there and some of them are already in production just a few days ago a company called humane released a product called ai pin it's a wearable pin with uh, ai computers in it and a battery that lasts all day Essentially, it's an AI assistant, right? You can ask it questions, you use it to send messages. It's much like Siri, but without a screen. Uh, it can do live translations. Since it's a wearable pin with no actual touch screen, it doesn't have apps. It has something called AI experiences, where you basically can tell it what you want it to do, like with your voice or tapping it itself. Um, I think the ultimate goal they had in mind is to kind of steer people away from being connected to the screen so much, right? So much content we're consuming, it's like we don't really enjoy reality anymore. And they want us to be completely hands-free, and this way we don't have to spend our time looking at the phone, we can just use the AI device, we can talk to it, things like that, and basically replaces many functions of a phone, but it's really just an assistant to us. Now, this sounds like a great idea because, of course, everybody agrees that we spend too much time on the phone. And we are seeing efforts to try to combat this like addiction we have to watching screens and videos. But unfortunately, I think that this is the wrong direction. People want to see content. They want to be immersed in content and a world of content. That's the trend we're seeing. 
the sense that people want control. They want to go online, be entertained. They want to feel good. They want to scroll through memes and photos and videos and laugh, right? That's what's needed for the next big revolution in technology. We want to be able to do everything our phones can do and have the same experiences on our phones, but without the physical phone itself. That's the only way the market's going to change and convince people to adopt these devices. This is something the next technology, the next revolution has to have. If we want to find a replacement to the phone, not only do we have to do what the phone can do, but we also have to do something better. And the technology that's headed in a better direction is VR. With VR, we can have a very similar experience to our phones, but also add this new world, this new immersive reality, this three-dimensional reality that the phone just can never do. Now, virtual reality is nothing new. It's not a new concept. In fact, the first widely available headsets came about in the 90s with Sega, and they were completely gaming focused. I mean, that was the limit of those VR headsets at the time, but it was just an atrocious experience. But today we finally live in a world where technology has progressed enough such that we can use these immersive VR headsets to a very good degree, a way that can actually be useful something we dreamed of in the 90s and thought would never happen is finally happening of course today we all know the oculus rift which facebook came out with and changed the industry it was a big seller and they work great for many games and can be used with other apps they're great but they make many people dizzy they're too heavy they're very clunky things their batteries don't last all day long they're still very limited as to what they can do relative to a phone. But this sparked many other companies to begin making their own VR headsets, Microsoft, and even Apple. In June of 2023, Apple has announced its Apple Vision Pro headset, which is more custom tailored for people's individual needs, their head sizes, even their eyesight. And these are gonna be way more comfortable than the Oculus headsets. Apple's headset will be even more powerful than the Oculus headsets and They'll utilize something called augmented reality, where you can actually overlay an AR screen onto reality as if you're actually watching a TV or a computer screen in high resolution. It's clear that Apple wanted to steer us in the direction of making it more comfortable to use and more better suited for watching videos and media. This is clearly a step in the right direction. The sky's the limit with this augmented reality. Because now, not only can you generate a computer screen or a TV screen in AR, but now you can produce a keyboard in AR and replicate an entire computer setup in augmented reality. Apple's also very close to releasing something called spatial video, where you can take videos in 3D, and when you put on the headset, you could be immersed in these three-dimensional videos. It's as if you're actually there in the scene. That is a game changer. This is definitely a step in the right direction and can be used for many applications. It's clear that Apple knows what it's doing. The only problem is that these things are gonna be very expensive when they come out in 2024, apparently $3,500 starting price. Another con is that they're still headsets. They're still clunky. They still look goofy. And frankly, I don't wanna wear these all day. And it's not gonna be a replacement to the iPhone. Well, not just yet. If everyone in the world is going to adopt this technology as we did with the smartphone, it has to be easy to use. And I mean just anyone can pick it up and use it just as a toddler uses a phone or a tablet. With headsets, it takes time to fit, put on, turn on, enter the menus. This process has to be expedited, where you just click and go, just as we do with phone interfaces. It also has to be accessible for the average person and affordable. And it has to be as capable as a smartphone in more. Today, this is hard to imagine. But one tech startup called Xreal has just launched a product that is exciting to say the least. AR glasses. Thin, wearable glasses that look just like a normal pair of sunglasses, but are embedded with AR technology. They could be worn and connected via USB to phones, gaming systems for a display, and it could be used to watch movies. It has an OLED screen which allows you to see content at 1080p resolution, and it even has built-in speakers. 
The best thing about these is that they aren't big clunky headsets. They actually seem pretty comfortable and appealing to way more people. Another thing that glasses can do for us is give us a sense of design and style, like we do with phones. We love to accessorize our phones, make them look nice. The same with perhaps glasses in the future. However, its capabilities are limited. It has short battery life, it has no camera at all, and people love using their cameras on their smartphones, and that same tech has to be included with glasses. It also doesn't have the computing power to really do what the Vision Pro can. Its interface is sluggish, and movies or games don't really look that good. But of all their technology, these AR glasses have the best chance of being a game changer. It's just a matter of refining the interface and squeezing more technology into the glasses. 12 years ago, when Google Glasses came out, people couldn't dream of fitting this much technology into glasses. But we are officially in the last days of the smartphone and the beginning of the next revolution. It really is now just a race between all these companies to the finish line. And whichever one can fit in the most technology with the easiest and most innovative interface into the lightest glasses and the best price will put the smartphone in the grave in the next five to seven years. Remember, five years after the release of iPhone is when it really took off and the masses started to adopt smartphones. By 2027, as we see computing technology grow, it is most likely that we will see such an AR technology emerge and finally replace the smartphone once and for all. What's after that? Well, it's hard to predict that far into the future, but I suspect contact lenses with AR. I mean, just imagine blinking an eye and being able to see media, movies, videos in high resolution and have AR or VR whenever you want. This is all possible. I also predict that in the next decade, we'll have brain technology where we'll wirelessly connect to our brains with interfaces that allow us to literally not, not have to wear anything and just think and be able to scroll through videos and media and things like that. And perhaps even be able to send thoughts to others. Instead of typing or clicking buttons, you'll now be able to just think and send a message to somebody, your own thoughts. And then we'll look back on the smartphone era and laugh like we do today with VHS tapes. All right, guys, that's the video for today. Please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out a tremendous amount. Boost the algorithm, please. Thank you. See you next time.